What's good? What's poppin'? It's your girl, Snaivu, back with another freaking video. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Nai. Please subscribe, join the family while you're here. So, while I'm at home chilling, waiting for my phone to charge, I am gonna do a story time on the time I found out that I had scoliosis. <laughs> Okay, so this was like many, many years ago. I think I was going to the fifth grade. Um, this actually happened, I think, during my fourth grade year. Maybe the beginning of my fourth grade year. Um, well, me and my mom, we were watching TV, and just so happened, a scoliosis commercial came on. So, my mom decided that she wanted to play doctor and see if I had it. So, she made me bend over, touch my toes, and she realized that the right side of my back was higher than the left side of my back. So she was like, I think you have scoliosis or whatever, but I'm gonna schedule an appointment to see if that's what you have. But she was more like 99.9% .9 sure that is exactly what I had. So she set up um, an appointment with my pediatrician. We went there and she also said that she felt that is exactly what it was. Um, and then when she realized that is what it was, she, she sent me to someone who specializes in scoliosis. So um, I went to him. He actually diagnosed me with scoliosis. Like, so that's his type of like field. He does that surgeries on people and there was a lot about scoliosis. He definitely diagnosed me with scoliosis. So at that point, we knew 100% that it was scoliosis that I had. So, um, we did x-rays and stuff, and when I was done, I had got dressed, because I had to, you know, put on the gown. I had to put my gown on and stuff. After I did that, uh, he had me wait in a room with my dad, because my dad was the one that took me to this appointment. So, uh, I was waiting in a room with my dad, and he came in and said that he had, um, some bad news that, um, Surgery would need to be done because the curvature of my spine was way over the limits of having a brace, like the percentage to have a brace. So mine was already at its worst stage already. That's like basically you find out you have cancer, but you're in stage four already, like it's way too late. So um, my curve had like, it went miles, okay? To the right so we had no choice but to do surgery i had appointment after appointment after appointment after appointment after appointment appointments were annoying um i had to get an mri done my mom took me and my friend jamie came with me and they said that as soon as they put me under because you know i'm a kid so they had to put me asleep during the mri because they knew that i could possibly be scared of the machine and I'd probably move. So they put me to sleep and they said as the medicine was working on me, I started talking like some crazy things. I don't remember exactly what I was saying, but I think they said, I said that the wall was falling and I don't remember saying that, so whatever. Um, I got that done and then I had other appointments. I would see my doctor, I think every month, up into my surgery. And then I had two appointments with United Blood Services, which is a company, um, a donation company where you can donate your blood. I wasn't donating anything. I was just simply pulling a pint of blood for two days. I went one day pull a pint and then another day pulled another pint. But two days I had to pull a pint of blood. So just in case I lost any blood during my surgery, I get my own blood back. So I did that, and it was the most painful thing ever. Everybody know I hate needles, hate them, 
And it's crazy because I have two tattoos, but I hate needles. So um, the lady tried to butter me up because I asked her if I could have numbing cream. And she told me that they don't do that there. So I'm in shock. I'm scared because she finna stick me and I'm gonna feel it. Yeah, so she was trying to like butter me up. She was like, you want a uh, oatmeal pie? You want an apple juice? What you want to watch on TV? Uh, mind you, there's other people in there that are watching what's on TV. And she definitely wanted to change it because I obviously was scared. But, sis, you can't get me. I know what you're about to do. I already know. So, I'm not going to turn on the I'm not going to turn on that oatmeal pie because I like oatmeal pies. And I definitely didn't turn on the apple juice. So, um, I was like, yeah. So, when it came with the equipment and stuff, I'm getting nervous because I'm like, yo, they finna stick me. Like, even though she tries to butter me up, I already know you about to stick me. I'm about to take my mind off of this oatmeal pie and this drink for a few seconds. Just a few seconds. But anyway, so, um, she did stick me and I cried like a baby. Cried like it was the end of the world. Of course, my mom told my dad and he made fun of me about it. So, uh, he said he was coming with me the next time I go to pull the next pint of blood and that I better not cry. You know, he went serious, but like he was like picking or whatever. And y'all, you know, I went the second time and I was like, that's the. And I was in summer camp, at, I was in summer camp at the time. So, I was at Gerard Park and I remember because I had went back to camp with that band on my arm and I had to stay out the sun. Sometimes to stay hydrated or something, so I wouldn't pass out. But um, my dad, for my dad, I did not cry at all. Like, I was like, he's not gonna follow me, that's dead. So, um, all right, fast forward. Um, it's the day before my surgery date, which was, I think, June 25th was the day before my surgery, and I had the surgery June 26th. I think that's how I went. So, um, we were heading to New Orleans because that is where I had my surgery. We went the day before because I had a tour around the hospital and the floor that I was going to be on. Um, it was a really cool, pretty hospital to me as a kid because they had a huge game room. They had a Wii, an Xbox, PlayStation books, games, that all kind of stuff, like all kind of stuff. See, for me as a kid, I'm like, oh my God. Only bad thing about that game room is that if I had visitors, they couldn't come in the room with me because it, it was strictly for patients. It wasn't for visitors. So um, if I was in the game room and someone came visit me, I didn't want to leave. So it's just like, oh, I'm just here. And I felt bad. So. But, um, yeah, um, we toured the hospital or whatever, but before, on our way there, we caught a blowout on the, it's not that check fly, it's another Long Bridge, I think, in Baton Rouge, not Baton Rouge, in New Orleans, it's a bridge, we got stuck on it, we caught a blowout, and we had to call and not reschedule, but tell them we were running a little late because we were on a flat. I had to pee y'all on the bridge and I was like pee because I had drank a lot of Capri Suns. She was like pee. Oh, excuse me. She was like, go ahead and pee. She opened the door and I had my butt ass out on the side of the road. It was hot too because my pee dried up like this. Like that's how hot it was. So when we finally got there, you know, she introduced me to all the nice nurses that I probably be seeing. Um, she showed me around the floor. Now the hospital rooms are double bedded, so there's two beds in a room, but they reserved my room for me and my mom so she could have a bed to sleep in, and I'll have a bed to sleep in. So um, that was a good thing about the hospital. Food, horrible, what do you mean? Uh, next day is surgery day. I had to be there for 6 a.m. I was nervous as hell. Like, nervous. I'm scared. I'm like, yo. It's like a 
big day in my life. This is what we so painful. It was a hundred and one things I was going to my head. I thought I was gonna die. I thought a lot of things. I mean, like anyone, you know, would feel like everyone would feel like that, especially as a kid. So, um, yeah, so we got there. She told me to change this to a gown. Got into my gown. Um, my mom and my dad were in the room with me. I don't think my brothers were. the hospital. I just don't know if they was in a room with me. But I think everybody. It was my mom, my dad, my aunt Tata, and I think my brothers. My little brothers. I think we were all in the same room. They were with me, I think. So the lady was coming, she was saying how she was gonna come back, give my medicine, give me my IV, and give me my IV. I automatically asked her right then and there, do you have another cream? And she was like, yes, you want some? And I was like, definitely. So she came to throw your cream on my arm and take it down. They can numb that part of my arm up. She gave me the medicine that I needed, and I'm guessing that was the medicine to knock me out because whew, I was out like a light within a matter of like minutes. Um, my mom said I was talking crazy again, and I said something about I was gonna go to sleep, run to New Orleans, have my surgery, run back, and wake up and my surgery would be done. That's what she said. I said, I don't remember. I don't believe it. But whatever. So, um, all I know is that I was out before she even came back to do the IV. If I would have known that I'd have been asleep before she would have came and do the IV, then I wouldn't have gotten up again. I was asleep. So, surgery, um, I think was seven hours, six, seven hours. My mother from what I was told, cried as soon as my eyes closed or whatever because she felt like I was not gonna wake up. So, I mean, that's any mother would feel like that, especially about a kid. She felt like I was not gonna wake up. And you know, no parent wants to bury their kid. So, she cried. I don't know about my daddy. She told me he did. I don't know, but anyways, I wake up from my surgery. Wait, they claim that they woke me up in the middle to see if I was all right. I don't remember them waking me up in the middle of that surgery. Cause if I did, I probably would have panicked at the time. But um, uh, when I woke up, I was in a hallway. And I turned all the things I see my mom, I didn't see my mom, I didn't see my dad, I didn't see nobody. But I'm still under some medicine, so I'm still kind of like moving a little bit. But I know where I am, so I'm like, Stranger that I don't know. You know the nurse, but I don't know you. So it's my nurse. Um, they, um, I think, had still been in the um, like the patient surgery room thing where people wait. Like, yeah, you said it. Um, when they were in there, they would call. I think every hour or every two hours, or when they did something. So like the doctor had just um, cut open my back, he called saying that, you know, I just opened her up, blah, 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 or he had a nurse call and be like, Dr. Bennett just opened her up and, you know, he started the surgery, he did it, he called when he was finished, like, stuff like that. So he would call to like, keep them updated on what was going on and how I was doing and blah, blah, blah. And um, I was sent to the recovery room, I see or whatever for a few hours just for me to recover a little bit and i was still asleep so um when i woke up again i was in my room with my mother i was in a lot of pain if i had to freaking describe this pain from zero to ten i would definitely say 12. okay <laughs> the pain was horrible like i do not sleep in one position at night i toss and turn and it was very, very, very difficult to sleep. I had to sleep on my side. Um, matter of fact, when we got back to the room, the doctor came in and he had asked my mom if she wanted to see my cut, 
and if I should have no one was here, I'm here. And then she wanted to see it, so I had like stitches, and then I had these um, stitch strips on top of them. They were dissolvable, by the way. Dissolvable strips, and then a big pad that was taped on my back. Y'all, that is like the worst experience. The surgery, the tape itched so bad. Oh my god. Like, I don't know if like the pain was the worst or the itching. It's like the tape was making my back itch so freaking bad. And I could not scratch it. I'd be like, mom, my back itch. Like crying because it itched so bad. And it was underneath. So I couldn't get to it in case if I scratch I'd miss my like my cut and my stitches and stuff. So mama was like, I'm gonna go get some powder. She would run down the street to get powder to rub on my back so it would stop itching, but it did not work. Um it was like it, it was painful. Like if anybody ever has to go through this, I'm letting you know now. Unless you have a very high pain tolerance, that crap is horrible. It is no, it is no horrible. I'm telling y'all, like sleeping was like the worst. Using the bathroom was the worst. Using the bathroom was definitely the worst. To sit down and squat on the toilet, well, I wouldn't squat, and I would sit, but to try to sit down hurt it like hell. It hurt like hell, seriously. Like it was bad, 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 bad to the point. Like, I got tired of, I'd wake up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, and I would get tired of asking my mom to, like, help me because she would be sleeping and I didn't want to disturb her. So, one night I got out of bed by myself, didn't call a nurse, I didn't call my mom, I didn't call nobody. And my dad and them had a hotel down the street, so he wasn't there. Um, like, I got out of the bed by myself. But now I'm in the chair next to my bed and I'm crying because I'm in so much pain. And my mom heard me crying. She was like, why the hell would you get out the bed without asking somebody? So I was like, because I didn't want to disturb you and I didn't want to call the nurse because it's just like, I keep calling them for every little thing. And I knew I could be, I knew I was already aggravating. Like, you know, they said I was. But it's just like, when I need to switch sides of the bed, like, I call the nurse to help me switch. And she put the wedge behind my back and yo, it was bad. But I would be in the game room some days, playing the game. I met a friend, I don't remember his name. He was a white little guy and something happened with his neck. He had surgery on his neck or something. And he was sitting down next to me and he'd be like, wait. Hold up, I'm trying to get back out Alright. This, this is how he was. We be playing a game. I'm sitting on this side. Wait. Wait. Okay. So this is him. I'm him. And then this is me. So we playing the game. He was like, when he would talk to me, he'd be like, So what are you in here for? And I'm like, it's like, what's wrong with your neck? <laughs> like, that's how it was. Like, he couldn't turn his neck like I could turn mine. He had to, like, what you looking here for? Type of shit. So, that's how it was. And I forgot why he said what happened to his neck. But we was in there almost every day until he ended up getting discharged. And I was in there by myself. Um, he was really cool. And I played the Wii a lot. So, my dad seen how much. I enjoyed playing the Wii, and I had got out, I think, the day before the 4th of July. Um, so, and my birthday was the 9th, July 9th. Y'all, we 22, that's what y'all did. But, um, my birthday is July 9th, so my dad decided he was going to buy me a Wii for my birthday. Uh, he bought the Wii for me, but I couldn't play it as much because I was 17. Um... When I got back home, um, I was really in pain, so I couldn't play the music like I wanted to. But my mother and my oldest brother was in my room every day 
when I got that week. Every day I'd wake up to one person on the side of my bed and the other one on the other side of my bed. Like the third my sleep. Like, y'all, this is my every day. Yeah, I had to, um, I got really upset once because my brothers wanted to play and my daddy was like, nah, it's not just for you, you need to share. And I was like, first off, you didn't buy it for them, you bought it for me. So why do I have to share something you bought me for my birthday? I was like, upset, okay, I was upset. He bought the weed, he was like, what's, what's wrong with sharing? I was like, but still, like, you're making it seem like it's for all of it, it's mine. It's not for all of us at all. It's my week because you bought it on my birthday. And it's my birthday, so I don't want nobody playing with it. And that's a rule for me. On my birthday, I do what I want, say what I want, get what I want, don't tell me no because we violate you. It's my day. I get what the hell I want, do what the hell I want, wear what the hell I want, say what the fuck I want. It's my day. Don't tell me to. So that's how I was feeling. <laughs> but um, I'm going to insert. A picture up after my bag because I still had appointments after my surgery. Um, because you know, yeah, to make sure I was okay. After that, school ended up starting. I had to have a rolling book sack, which was very embarrassing. I had I had a pink rolling book sack, y'all. And for three months, I could not ride the bus. I had to be a car rider. So my mother would drive me to school every morning. When I finally got on the bus after my three months were up. I used to drag my rolling book set on the bus. Like, I was go, 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 like, get on the bus, go, 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 like, it was so embarrassing trying to drag that on and off the bus. It was, <laughs> ah, but y'all, like, I've been dealing with this color system for a very long time. My back still isn't straight at all. Um, and I did ask him, why my back hadn't gotten straight and he said that it had reached its worst stage and all he was trying to do was stop it from growing so um i was like okay like i gotta face the fact that i will never be straight i will always be crooked and i found that and at first people used to talk about my back a lot and it used to really really hurt my feelings but then i started clowning myself with them like y'all can't hear my feelings People didn't call me disabled. People didn't call me my broke bag. People didn't call me a lot of things. That didn't do anything to me. <laughs> like, it got to a point I started crying myself. And people used to hate it. Like, get on me. Like, why are you talking about yourself like that? Because if I don't clown myself about it, what people say is going to hurt my feelings because I'm letting it get to me. So I'm a clown about it too. So when they clown me about it, I'm a ha 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 because it is funny. <laughs> but it did, um, I couldn't do a lot of things. I couldn't be in PE. Um, so this day, I am now 20. I'm going to be 22 in a few days. And my dad will not let me pick up a gallon of milk or a case of water or anything heavy. Even if I have like too many grocery bags, like he only allows me to carry like two grocery bags and only if they're like really light because I'm gonna hurt myself. But that is how I found out how I had scoliosis and the process of me going through all this. If you do have scoliosis and you are having the surgery, I'm gonna be blunt. It hurts like hell. It hurts like hell, okay. Maybe because I'm older, I'd probably take it off like really lightly, but back then, shit hurt, okay. It really hurt. Bad. <laughs> Bad. Every now and then, my back still kind of aches a little bit. Whatever. I'm making buku videos, like today and sun tomorrow and Sunday. I'm gonna have my birthday vlog. Like I am going to be on it. So I'm gonna have videos to post. So um, yeah, if you really enjoyed this video, please give my video a thumbs up. If I get 50 likes, I will start doing a every week like marathon video type thing. I'm gonna pick a day during the week and I will upload 
every week. Make sure you comment and subscribe to your family and your friends. Share my video. Turn your post notifications on if they're not on already so you are notified every time I post. But it's your girl, Naya Boo, signing out.